fake tech AI is a lie. I started to think this way back, like over a year ago. Whenever I hear a tech leader say AI for the benefit of humanity. I mean, I think this is going to be one of the greatest tools humans have yet invented. Here we are for the first time with something that's going to be far more intelligent than us. We can guide it in a direction that's beneficial to humanity. Or I see a demo day release of some sort of commercial product. We know that many people who want to build the GPT don't know how to code. We've made it so that you can program the GPT just by having a conversation. Gemini in Docs will proactively show me a summary of this file so that I can get a sense of what's going on without needing to take the time to read the whole thing. I just get this weird feeling, like kind of in the pit of my stomach. It's really unpleasant, but I can't really put my finger on it. And if you talk to any like mid senior level ish employee at a big tech company that's doing AI, which is basically all of them, they get distinctly uncomfortable if you start asking questions around what is AI actually doing to our lives? How is it impacting our jobs? How is it shaping our future? So it just kind of all hit me the other day. This big tech narrative of building a technological utopia is a lie. In this video, we're going to uncover the extent of this lie and why we all need to collectively get our shits together so we don't end up being the ones paying for this lie. Because I certainly don't see people like Sam Altman or Jeff Bezos being the ones to foot the bill. AI allows companies to grow faster and build personalized experiences that they otherwise would not be able to. HubSpot, the sponsor of this portion of the video, interviewed over a thousand startup founders to ask them how exactly they will use AI to grow their company. A big learning is that 66% of employers intend to hire an employee with AI experience in the next year. This is your sign to level up to learn an in-demand and very useful skill. How to use AI to take a product to market faster and cheaper. They also give you frameworks on how to incorporate these tools like product development, pricing strategy, and marketing, as well as what industry are investing in AI the most. My favorite part is page 20, which I want you to pay particular attention to. The top AI tools used for growing a business. You can download this free resource in the link over here, also linked in description. Thank you so much HubSpot for providing free resources on how to leverage the power of AI and for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now onto the video. This is Sam Altman. Many of you guys probably know him as the CEO of OpenAI. Prior to this, he was the leader of Y Combinator, where he led the investment of several unicorn companies, including DoorDash, Airbnb, Reddit, and Instacart. So he really understands how the venture capital world works. The investors, the money, the startups, all of this was crucial towards the success of OpenAI. Anyways, 2015 was the year in which we first heard about this company called OpenAI. I uh, actually just agreed to fund a company that is not even really a company, sort of a semi-company, semi-nonprofit doing AI safety research. That's right. In 2015, Sam Altman decided to invest in this peculiar company that's more of a nonprofit that does AI safety research with the stated goal to advance digital intelligence in the way that is most likely to benefit humanity as a whole, unconstrained by the need to generate financial returns. Since our research is free from financial obligations, we can better focus on the positive human impact. But at some point, things didn't work out. We didn't see a path forward there. So we needed some of the benefits of capitalism, but not too much. Some benefits of capitalism, but not that much. So whatever not that much is defined by, it includes a clear focus on generating financial returns by having closed source AI. There is a shift in focus to commercial products, as well as a $10 billion deal with Microsoft, a clearly for-profit company. And who knows what else they may be doing that we don't know of. So let's actually explore what OpenAI's real motive is here, their secret agenda, I need money. I know. I would like to dub the following phenomenon the circle jerk of AI. In the past three years, the magic word in order to get funding is AI. Basically, you say that you're an AI company doing AI things and the investors will flock to you. And this is really important to be successful as a startup, as a company, because nowadays in Silicon Valley, the way that you succeed is not based upon how good your innovation or your product is. It's based upon how many investments that you have. Now, I call this the Uber problem. We saw two heavily capitalized companies driving everybody else out of we don't know that they're the best companies. They're the ones that big investors picked up. So in order to sustain these investments and to attract more investors to your company, you need to be able to show growth, show increased growth, increased innovation in your AI technologies. And how do you do that? By prioritizing growth over anything else, over safety, over security. Sam Altman knows this game well, and he's able to play it very, very well. That's why he's been able to 10x the value of OpenAI in just a few years, while still keeping the public 
public happy by sticking to their narrative with our mission is to ensure that artificial general intelligence benefits all of humanity. So I just want to say I'm not picking on OpenAI in particular. All the other tech companies are also participating in this circle jerk. Meta laying off a bunch of people and then saying that they're reinvesting it all into AI has seen their stocks skyrocket. Nvidia being valued at over $1 trillion now by focusing on generative AI. And my favorite one is Elon Musk being part of that whole like white paper signing situation. I don't know if you guys remember this way back in the day by asking companies to slow down their AI research and AI innovation. Elon Musk say advanced AI, which allows computers to perform tasks that normally require human intelligence could pose profound risk to society and humanity. And now we know the reason why he was such a proponent of that is because he just wanted to give himself time to develop his own AI, Grok. To make the situation even more ridiculous, there's this running thread of these AI leaders talking about how they are worried about AI safety, what could come about all of this. I don't know. They're probably forced to address some of the concerns and also just to like appear more human, I guess. I think if this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong and we want to be vocal about that. If you were really so concerned about AI safety, then why are you still accelerating it? Shouldn't you stop? The clear motive here is not to develop artificial intelligence to benefit all of society, blah, blah, blah. It's basically just a bunch of billionaires competing with each other in order to have a monopoly in AI. And guess what? The repercussions of this is even worse than you think. It's all a trick. Back in 2023, Google came up with this very impressive demo of Gemini. Tell me what you see. I see a squiggly line. What about now? It looks like a bird to me. What if I add this? The bird is swimming in the water. It has a long neck and beak. It is a duck. Really impressive, right? But unfortunately, it came to light that this demo is a bit deceptive, but actually still pretty impressive, which is why when Gemini Ultra came out in 2024, I was really excited to try it out. I tried replicating the results of the Gemini demo by prompting Gemini with the same prompts and seeing what came out of it. And drumroll please, this. The image you sent me now appears to show a drawing of a snake on a piece of white paper. The snake is long and slender with a small head and forked tongue. Right. Definitely a snake. Now, in a more recent conference, they came up with these new autonomous agents. Super fancy, really, really impressive. Gemini for Google Workspace is our AI-powered agent. To quickly identify threats, you can use Gemini in security operations. We're seeing really interesting creative agents. But when I excitedly tried to replicate this with their Vertex AI Builder, can you help me log my pet into this system? I can help you with that. Can you please provide me with your pet's name an ID. My pet is a goldfish and does not have an ID. What is its name? My goldfish name is Bobby. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble creating a new pet profile for your goldfish. There is an error loading the agent. I was again sorely disappointed. Seems to be a trend. Now combine this together with a pop-up message from Gemini, which states, your conversations are processed by human reviewers. They improve the technologies powering Gemini. Apps. I don't know. One could maybe even start hypothesizing that maybe Google is faking its AI capabilities. And of course, they are not the only ones. Amazon has these just walk-in stores where you're supposed to be able to go inside, grab anything that you need. And then when you walk out, there's facial recognition technology and AI, of course, that's able to charge your credit card automatically. Or so they say. According to the information, there was in fact over a thousand Indian associates that were watching a cameras and labeling footage of shoppers. Quote, an employee who worked on a technology said that actual humans, albeit distant and invisible ones based in India, reviewed about 70% of sales made in the cashierless shops as of mid 2022. It's just insanity. The amount of lies that we as a public are supposed to be able to tolerate. Like seriously, what the f these companies are becoming more and more reckless to the point that they're just blatantly disregarding the safety of the general public. For example, one of the biggest ironies is the fact that Sam Altman's whole like ousting ordeal last year as the CEO of OpenAI was linked to concerns over AI safety. Yep, remember 2015? OpenAI was a AI safety research company. Seriously, I think this is really just crossing the line here, all for the sake of gathering more investor money. And it's like actually insulting by feeding the public this continuous lie about how they're still doing everything for the public, for the future of humanity, for everybody. 
trickle-down economy is defined as a theory that tax breaks and benefits for corporations and the wealthy will trickle down and eventually benefit everybody. Like this, filling the cup of the top wealthy people would eventually trickle down to all of us. Sam Allman, of course, is a big proponent of this in his 2021 essay called Moore's Law Everything. He states that the key three consequences of the air revolution is to one, this revolution will create phenomenal wealth. The price of many kinds of labor, which drives the cost of goods and services, will fall towards zero once sufficiently powerful AI joins the workforce. And two, the world will change so rapidly and dramatically that an equally drastic change in policy will be needed to distribute this wealth and enable more people to pursue the life they want. And three, if we get both of these right, we can improve the standard of living for people more than we ever have before. The way that he proposes we should offset the job loss to the common folk is to have UBI, universal basic income that is from corporate and property tax rates alone. Yeah, I don't know about that. Since when has the rich ever wanted to give away their wealth and pay more taxes? We now know that so much of the philanthropy that these really wealthy people do is also for the sake of tax breaks. So sorry to break that illusion if you still had that illusion. I'm not an expert here and that's like a whole other can of worms, but I mean, I'm not gonna be holding my breath on that one. In reality, trickle-down economy works more like this. The cup of the wealthiest and the most powerful just keep getting bigger. Case in point, the recklessness that we've seen in these big tech companies trying to get more investor money, they're not exactly focusing on trickling it down to the rest of us and really actually helping us, you know, benefit society. I mean, no wonder the employees in these companies, when you start asking them questions, they end up getting like pretty uncomfortable. But hey, please let me clarify here. I am not attacking these employees from big tech companies. I mean, that would also make me hypocritical because I worked at Meta, a big tech company. I also know many people that work at these big tech companies and I don't think that they're bad people. Like they're willingly contributing towards this mess. It gets really complex because as I'll talk about later, AI very much has this ability of bettering humanity and the people working at these technologies can clearly see that. But what leadership says that they're doing versus what they're actually doing just doesn't line up. So before you click off this video full of doom, I want to show you that there is hope in AI doing tremendous good in this world. Actually, a lot of hope because there is no clear winner of AI right now. There is no company that has a monopoly. Truly open means open to everyone. Introducing the counter movement of closed source proprietary big tech technology, the open source movement. Open source refers to a type of software whose source code is made available to the public and can be modified and shared by anyone. It's built on principles of collaboration, transparency, and community-oriented development. It's basically the opposite of big tech AI. This movement's been around for quite some time now, and there's been really big successes that we've seen from the open source community. For example, Red Hat founded in 19 93 became huge in supporting professional enterprise level Linux distributions. The Apache Software Foundation founded in 1999 is also responsible for a lot of the open source software that are the foundation to the internet and many web technologies today. MySQL, PostgreSQL, anybody that uses databases are probably familiar with these open source databases. GitHub that really brought together the open source community. Coding languages like Python, JavaScript, these are all open source and many of you all use it today. These are just a few examples. What makes me really happy now is that the open source community has really stepped up the game in this whole AI situation. If you just scroll through Hugging Face, which itself is an open source collaborative ML AI platform, you'll see lots and lots of open source AI models and people are developing open source consumer products as well. We're all into agents these days. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out this video over here, which I go into more detail about it. But yes, agents. We have the O1 Lite, which is a voice interface for your home computer. It's open source and allows developers to build on top in order to create their own unique agents. ChatDev is another very interesting open source agent initiative. It's a collection of intelligent autonomous agents that work together to form a software company. For example, a CEO agent, a CTO agent, a programmer agent, tester, etc, etc. These agents work together in order to accomplish a task that the user sets out. I really recommend that you play around with it. It's super easy to use and really cool how it works. Anyways, there is this open source AI push 
cash. And given the financial viability that has already been proven in other open source projects previously, many investors are also willing to invest in open source projects and companies. As individuals, you watching this video as well, I hope, will start thinking more about contributing towards open source. Whether that be just volunteering, contributing towards open source, using more open source products, or even building your own businesses and startups, which by the way, is probably a lot easier than you think, especially if you use AI to help you out. Hey, at least check out the free HubSpot resource below. I think with open source, we'll be able to make a big step forward towards the realignment of AI innovation and development with the benefit of humanity as a whole. Mr. President. Policymakers around the world are certainly interested and want to participate in regulating AI. They're definitely talking about it. I think there is a keen concern among EU and US regulators not moving fast enough as a consequence being left behind. This is really encouraging because policy and regulation is like the top-down counterpart of open source. It represents a really big hope in aligning AI innovation with the benefit of humanity. But these policymakers themselves also admit that they just don't really know that much about this whole thing. You need computer scientists, you need engineers, you need people who've worked in that commercial community who can come into your agency and tell you what's going on. This is where someone like you comes in, somebody who is interested and willing to learn about AI, whether you come from a technical background, your computer scientists, your software engineers, your data scientists, or people who are learning how to use these tools. We need people like you in order to spearhead AI innovation. Whether you're a technical person or someone who's willing to to learn about AI, how to use it, and how it works. I think many of us don't really consider going into policy and regulation because that just seems like it feels like the domain of liberal arts people, of social sciences. But we need people who understand AI in order to spearhead the development of policies and regulations. Even for big tech companies, I genuinely don't think most people working at these companies or associated with these companies are evil. And they genuinely are doing really great things, leaps and bounds in innovation. But the issue is that you can't allow big tech companies to regulate themselves because their underlying goal is always to maximize shareholder returns. We need companies that are instead aligned with benefiting humanity to go in there and to intervene and to make sure that big tech AI is headed in the right direction. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video or live stream.